Hello everyone, thanks for tuning to today's second video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next week, same day, so today's second video, uh, which will take us to around the 10th of uh, April. We'll be able to extend out beyond that, we'll be able to extend the GFS and ECM on Solos over to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video, as usual, for the next four weeks. That will be pretty much covering the whole of April, uh, of course. A five-day forecast has been released, so as always on a Wednesday, we have a look at the weather for the next five days. And uh, it's going to be quite an interesting five days coming up, actually. Starting off quite chilly. In fact, for the north, really quite cold across Scotland. Uh, I'm going to see temperatures really pushing up over the weekend. We could get our first 20 degrees of the uh, season somewhere across eastern England on Sunday afternoon. So have a look at Friday forecast, see what's going on there. We've got a live stream coming up on the Gas Service YouTube channel between... Uh, 4 and 5 o'clock this afternoon. 4 and 5 o'clock on the Gas Service YouTube channel. Uh, we'll have a live stream. Um, just to allow everybody to check in and to uh, see how we're all doing. We've had to remove the uh, chat uh, for the time being from gasworthies.com. He's paying a subscription for that and uh, the ad revenues have dropped too much to be able to carry that on for the time being. When things pick up, I'm hoping we'll be able to put that back. But uh, for the time being, uh, we've removed the chat. So I thought in replacement of that, really, we would have uh, a couple of live streams a week, once on a Wednesday, once on a Sunday, in the afternoon, just to let everybody check in and um, make sure that everyone is OK. And we'll, of course, we'll talk a little bit about weather uh, as well during um, that live stream. So that'll be on the youth channel between 4 and 5 o'clock this afternoon. And now, before I do anything else, I'm going to say a big thank you to our latest PayPal donor. So, we have had a, a donation for gasworthies.com through PayPal uh, from our good friend Epic, Epic OP, and his mum Christine have uh, given, given us a donation. So, a big, big thank you to Epic for your donation. Uh, you've donated before, but thank you so much for doing it uh, again for Gals Webbies. And also a big thank you to uh, to Epic's mum, Christine, as well. I know you're both going to be watching the videos. I know you're both going to be uh, enjoying the videos. And uh, maybe we'll see you later in the live stream, Epic. Let's uh, see if we can uh, have a chat later on in the live stream. But thank you so much to Epic and also uh, to Christine for uh, the donation for Gaz Wevis. I've had lots of donations coming in over the past few days. I'm really, really uh, blown away by this. Um, as I've been explaining in the videos, uh, we're going through this terrible crisis with the uh, coronavirus. It's primarily uh, a health and medical crisis. Of course, it is also a financial crisis as well, though. And uh, the ad revenue that... Um, uh, helps to pay for gas weapons has just been absolutely collapsing over the past uh, two, three weeks in particular. It's completely gone off the cliff, really. Uh, so the other revenue streams like Patreon, like PayPal, are very, very useful and helpful to be able to keep things going uh, at, at this time. Uh, but I appreciate it's a very difficult time for everybody. And I wasn't expecting anywhere near the response that we've had uh, with um, these donations. So I, I'm just going to say huge, huge thank you to all of you. I, you are really, really kind. And I know you're all going through uh, troubled times uh, as well. We're all going through it. So, um, I mean, it's just very, very special what you are doing uh, for GazWeatherVis.com. And uh, thank you so much to everybody uh, for your donations. If you would like to give a donation, Gas service and only do it if you can afford it, please. So uh, I know it's a difficult time for everybody. So only donate if you can afford to. But if you would like to, then you can come to the Gas Webbies PayPal page, sign into your PayPal account, and give whatever donation to Gas Webbies. We'll give you a mention in the videos, give you a shout out, and say thank you so much uh, for doing that. There is Patreon uh, as well. If you would like to become a patron, Gas Webbies, we've got 64 patrons so far. So hello and a big thank you to our 64. Patrons, if you would like to become a patron, the Gaz Webbies, again, all you need to do is go to Gaz Webbies Patreon page, you sign uh, up for a patron account, assuming you don't already have one, and then you give an ongoing monthly donation to Gaz Webbies, $1 a month. Uh, uh, and again, it's so special for everybody to do this for us, either through uh, Patreon or through PayPal. Really is incredibly kind and uh, incredibly special. I've been saying we're going to keep uploading through this crisis. We're um, increasing the live streams as well on a Wednesday and on a Sunday uh, too. So we're keeping the content going as long as we possibly can. 
Uh, and uh, we're going to get through this crisis. We're going to get through it by everybody coming together and looking out for one another and taking care of one another. And uh, we will get through it. And uh, we're going to keep uploading the content. Uh, so we're going to keep the content coming. I know a lot of you have got more uh, important things than the weather to, to think about, but I think it's important that you have the opportunity to get away from uh, what's happening with uh, COVID-19 and be able to come to your channel and just for a few minutes be able to think about something else. I think that's actually very important to keep doing that. So we're going to keep recording, we're going to keep uploading, we're going to keep the content uh, coming and uh, just a huge, huge thank you to all of you for your uh, for your donations to Gazweb is at this very, very difficult time. Thank you so much everybody for doing that. And of course, a special thank you to Epic. Special thank you to Epic, OP and Mum Christine. Thank you so much both uh for doing that right let's start video then and uh, we're going to begin by uh, having a look at central temperature but ct is in uh so if we for march if we scroll down this is ct page at gas has got every month's central temperature number all the way back 1659 it's the longest and uh most reliable long-standing temperature record anywhere on earth of course the further back you go through the decades and centuries the more unreliable it becomes so when you get through to like 1659 it's only a snapshot really of uh, what the conditions were like back then but anyway we'll scroll down through the centuries through the 1700s through the 1800s and we're going to the 1900s and we come down to the uh, latest uh, year of course which is 2020 just there so 6.7 is our number for March 2020. March 2020 CT has been confirmed by the UK Met Office at uh, 6.7. It follows on from January at 6.4 and from February at 6.3. So, not greatly different, really, from uh, January and February. Uh, just a little bit up, particularly compared to February, I suppose. But um, really not a huge amount of difference in all three months, which means that the very high temperature anomaly that we had in January and February, they were over two and a half degrees above average, has um, stalled in March. With March coming in at 6.7, it means that that... that uh, um, continuous anomaly to average has stalled and come right back down. Uh, that compares to the 61 to 1990 March temperature average at 5.7. So it has been milder than the 61 to 1990 average by around a degree. But compared to, and that's the old and cold temperature average, of course, then encompasses the very cold decade of the 1960s, which had abnormally cold winters and really, um, really cold conditions all year round, really, in a lot of the years during the 1960s. It was an unusually cold year. But if we compare it to uh, an unusually cold decade, I should say, if we compare uh, it to a more modern average, which is 81 to 2010, Oops, let's get rid of that. That's the more recent average. Then you can see, actually, it's virtually bang on uh, the 81 to 2010 average, really. 6.6 .6 is the 30-year temperature average for March in 81 to 2010. We've come out at 6.7. It's 0 0.1 of a degree above average. But basically, we're bang on the 81 to 2010 average. But we are a little bit warmer, around a degree warmer, than the 61 to 1990 average. How that compares with uh, past years? Well, of course, we have 2019, March 2019, coming out at uh, 7.8. So uh, it's been a cooler March compared to March 2019. Nowhere near as cold as March 2018, though. That was a beast from the east, March, of course, at uh, 4.9. Uh, also, it's been cooler than um, March 2017, which had a CET of 8.7. That was a very warm one. Not as cool as March 2016, which came out at 5.8. Very close to 2015, which was um, 6.4. Uh, 2014 at 7.6. And of course, we have the really cold March of 2013 at 2.7. That was either the coldest March since 1962 or 1881, I think, or 1883, depending on which um, temperature average you take. But that was a really, really cold March. A really cold March in 2013. Before that, 2012 uh, was actually a relatively warm March at 8.3. And then very similar, uh, in fact, bang on, the uh, March CT for 2011. That one also came in at 6.7. March 2010, despite following a cold winter, wasn't particularly cold either, at uh, 6.1. 
So it's not been uh, it's not been um, particularly warm or cold either way, uh, but we have arrested that um, very uh, high temperature anomaly that we had during January and February with both months uh, posting really really warm anomalies we have brought that to an end and that's a reason that despite not being a particularly cold month in its own terms that's a reason march 2020 has actually felt quite chilly because we have arrested those uh significantly warmer than average anomalies that we have in um in january and february so that really closes the door on March. We wait to see what uh, April has in store. And, of course, we're going to have Terry Scully's April forecast ahead for you at Gazworthy's tonight. Uh, around 7 o'clock, you guys see what Terry Scully is predicting for April. And later on in the week, we're going to have the Gazworthy's April 2020 forecast as well. Right, let's move on then, and we're going to have a look at the uh, GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of, week, of weeks. We're looking at Aberdeen uh, today. So, the uh, red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Aberdeen, and we're starting off quite close to average at the moment. That's going to get colder in the next couple of days. Of course, we have got a cold snap coming up, uh, particularly from the northern part of the country during Thursday and Friday. That cold air won't really get down into the south, and then it gets pushed away as we go into the weekend, and we see the upper air temperatures really lifting up over the weekend. We're going to have our first spell of proper warm southerly winds, which could lift temperatures to around 20 degrees, somewhere like Norwich or London on Sunday afternoon for the first time this year. After that, a little bit of a drop in temperature around Monday, but next week looking generally quite mild uh, to often uh, on the warmer than average side. Um, until we get towards the middle of April, that's this period just here, possibly a bit of a cooling trend then, but of course by then we are going into the very extended range of the GFS and its ensemble. Precipitation-wise, a lot of dry weather over the next few days. It does gradually start to turn more unsettled in Aberdeen next week, but I'm not sure it'll be bad unsettled down in the south and the southeast, but it is the idea, it has been at work within the model output over the past few days actually, just the idea that the further on into April we go through the second week and running up to the middle of the month, we probably start to turn things more unsettled, and this does coincide with the Easter period uh, of course, we did the second Easter update last night, and that was demonstrating that um, things just maybe go a bit more unsettled around the Easter period, although temperatures should hold up OK, but there is quite a bit of uncertainty about that. So not guaranteed to go unsettled uh, around the East Pier. But I think we do see the trend there. But as we go further on through the ensemble, it probably does start to become a little bit more unsettled. Temperature anomalies from the 1st through to the 9th of April are coming out very close to average, a little bit below average across the northern parts of the country, uh, near normal to possibly a little bit above average for England. Away. So it's not a big deviation either way. I think with that, we say temperature anomalies are very close to average. So gradually we're beginning to lose those colder than average temperature anomalies that we've had over the past few days. Precipitation anomalies drive an average for much of England and Wales. A little bit wet and average west of Scotland Northern Ireland. That might be telling us that as we're going into the second week of April, things are starting to go a bit more unsettled. Initially, that will be in the north and west, but it may start to impact other parts of the country the further on we go. We'll have to see about that. That's how the GFS is looking for Saturday. Then it's all covered by the week by the five-day forecast, of course. Our uh, high pressure beginning to drift away to our east on Saturday. Low pressure out to the west. That's what's turning the wind into the south. So we draw up these uh, southerly winds. The areas originate from quite a long way south. If you follow the isobars back, kind of like. Uh, Spain and the Mediterranean, so they're wafting up western side of Europe. That's what's going to lift the temperature up through the weekend. Doesn't last that long. On Monday, we bring a cold front across the country. That'll take outbreaks of rain with it, and it produce colder air from off the Atlantic, or certainly cooler air from off the Atlantic. And then as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, we go back into those southerly winds again, or southwesterly. So. Quite a bit of dry weather through to the middle part of next week and temperatures lifting back up, certainly, into the mid-teens Celsius. Moving up towards the Easter period, 
Uh, so this is uh, Thursday next week, 9th of April. We start to drop a weather system in from the northwest. That probably brings about a show rain. And behind that, it turns a bit cooler. And then high pressure takes over as we get through to the Easter weekend itself. So I was just saying that it looks like things could go a bit more unsettled around Easter. This particular GFS run does actually bring us a lot of dry weather for the Easter period. And you would have thought quite warm as well. Maybe relatively cold nights, but by day could be quite warm and uh, that doesn't look too bad at all for easter saturday 11th of april lots of high pressure dry fine sunny and pretty warm conditions uh, as well that's easter sunday just a little bit beyond day 10 uh, 12th of april so by then we've got the high pressure sitting over just to the east so that's bringing up quite a warm southerly to southeasterly flow this high pressure sticks around to back on money as well so if that's right that's a really dry and quite warm easter that we've got coming up there does highlight the uncertainty that we're seeing from run to run and model to model for this easter period though uh, i have to say uh, as we come towards the end of this GFS run, we start to take the high pressure northwards. This gets us to Friday the 17th of April. High pressure is drifting northwards, possibly bringing in some slightly colder air from the east and the northeast then. But the emphasis is on dry weather. So for this particular GFS run, anyway, it may be an outlier. Um, but for this particular GFS run, there is a lot of high pressure going on. Lots of dry weather, even to the middle of April and possibly even uh, beyond. And a lot of the time it's relatively warm too. Uh, GEM looks like that. So again, the high pressure is drifting over to the east on Saturday. We draw up those very mild, if not quite warm, southerly winds of Sunday. Then low pressure in both the Atlantic, cutting off that southerly supply of air and turning us a little bit more unsettled and uh, uh, rather cooler through the, uh, through the early part of next week. But uh, then we get through towards the Easter period. High pressure begins to establish quite close to the country. That's how long as we get to day 10. Saturday 11th of April, high pressure is in there and it's dominating weather. So that's another model that's suggesting quite a warm and dry uh, Easter period could be possible. ECM looks like that. Again, uh, high pressure drifting to our east over weekend. We draw up those uh, southerly winds. They increase the temperature temporarily. Early next week, it turns more unsettled and a little bit cooler. I mean, to the middle of next week, again, we've got high pressure to our east, low pressure to our west. Winds are coming up from the south, so that looks very dry and quite warm through the middle of next week. Some sort of trough coming in from the northwest, bringing some shallow rain, probably lowering the temperature too. And as we get towards day 10, Saturday length of April, high pressure is sort of out to our west. But over the UK itself, pressure is quite weak. So out of the big three, the GFS, the GM, and the ECM, the ECM is probably the most unsettled, this trough, uh, most settled for day 10 for the East weekend. This trough will probably produce some showers. So we've moved through some precipitation uh, forecast based on that ECM run from Tometcho.com. Got some show rain in the north today, otherwise lots of dry weather coming up. We will have plenty of dry weather over the next few days as well. Notice snow showers in the far north of Scotland. That's been northerly, but we're just on the periphery of uh, through Thursday and Friday. Just gets into Scotland and then gets uh, pushed away over the weekend. We draw up those southerly winds, lots of dry weather over the weekend and quite warm too. Early next week, weather system comes in from the Atlantic. That brings some rain uh, with it and lowers the temperature through the early part of next week. Then the southerlies and many dry weather come back. Into the second half of next week, another band of rain moves across the country. That one probably relatively showering in nature, but again, not to lower the temperature. And then into the Easter period, this is, uh, this is Good Friday, 10th of April. We've got these showers rotating around the country. So the ECM is a little bit showery uh, as we go into the week, Easter weekend. But remember, the GFS and the GM do look more settled compared to the ECM. So that could be a little bit of a synoptic outlier. It may not end up as showery as as that is suggesting. These are the options on the table uh, from the uh, ECM Ensembles via the Icelandic Met Office for Day 10, which gets us to the 11th of April, Easter Saturday. We have 18 members of the ECM Ensembles with high pressure over the country. So well, that's going to be bringing a lot of dry weather. Of course, um, that's in line with what the EC with what the GFS and GM are showing. So that's a high pressure dominated ECB. That includes the ECM control run as well. 17 uh, have high pressure down to our southwest and low pressure out to our north and west. They're a little bit more unsettled. And then 16, including the operational run, have a weak ridge close to the country, but also a trough just here and out there. So try to get a little bit more uh, settled, but actually could be rather showery 
uh, with those where we've got these weaker areas of the uh, pressure. In two weeks time, these are the options that we've got for the ECM ensembles. This gets us to the 16th of April. Have 16 members of the ECM ensembles with high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north. They're rather flat and westerly, probably quite mild, relatively dry. 15 with high pressure to our east, bringing the winds from an east to south easy direction. Uh, they should be a little bit cooler, but mainly dry. 13 with high pressure out to our west, bit of middle Atlantic ridge, low pressure to our east. Winds probably coming in from the north with those. And then the seven that we've got down here, they're the most unsettled as we come into the second half of uh, April. They're bringing low pressure in off the Atlantic, of course, and they'll be bringing lots of showers, if not longer spells of rain with them. Overall, you have to say, there's no sign of anything overly dramatic taking place as we move towards the middle of April and maybe even beyond it. Uh, finally, CFSV2 means a 500 bit of our heights broken down to weak periods. The first week period takes from the 1st to the 7th of April. The coming week has low pressure to the north, high pressure sort of to the south. So it's a little bit unsettled for more northern parts of the country. Southern areas turning drier, all areas becoming milder. Week 2 is the 8th to the 14th of April. We're going to have to change the colour with this one. So we've got above average heights extending through the country from the southwest, ridging up to the northeast below average heights being pushed away from us jet streams go, go north as well that's uh, mainly dry particularly for some of these parts of the country probably quite warm also week three has high pressure just to our west southwest low pressure to our north that's kind of a flat westy pattern again for the south a lot of dry weather is on offer with that one and then week four is the 22nd 28th of april high pressure continues to dominate sitting over not just the uk but much of western europe low pressure to the northwest jet streams push north as two and uh, that's very, very nice as we come to the end of April, still dominated by high pressure. So the CFS wants to have us a pretty, wants us to have a pretty, um, pretty anti-cyclonic April actually, with particularly for southern areas, a lot of dry. A relatively warm weather coming up. Could it be that after all of the wet weather we've had over the past few months, we are going into a much drier pattern for April? It won't be the first time that's happened, and we did highlight the possibility in the Gas Weather Spring forecast. But of course, a long way to go on that, and we shall see what happens. Right, that's it for video number two. We're going to be back later on. Uh, between 4 or 5 o'clock with our live stream on the Gas Weather's YouTube channel. So if you want to check into that and have this, you'll be able to listen to it later, by the way. Uh, it'll be on the channel to uh, listen to the replay. But uh, if you would like to check in and have a listen live, then that'll be between 4 and uh, 5 o'clock. We may show you the latest run from CanSips in that one. CanSips has just updated, so we may show you uh, a few months' worth of data from that. And we'll just have a bit of a chat and see how everyone's doing during this um, time of crisis. So that'll be between 4 and 5 o'clock on the Gazzo's YouTube channel this afternoon. And then tonight around 7 o'clock, we've got Terry Scully's April forecast coming up. So keep checking back. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.